This is Dr. Martin's Supplemental Lecture Part 2 on viruses uh, on Chapter 16, Section 5. I'm going to introduce you to a little bit about viruses. We can define a virus in a number of different ways. Um, it is, first off, an intracellular parasite. in that it can only survive inside of a cell uh, for any length of time. It can only reproduce inside cells. Uh, another definition, it is an infectious particle containing an internal core of RNA or DNA. That core is then surrounded by a protective coating. Of protein. And that layer is called a capsid. Some bacteria only have these two structures, but other bacteria actually have, in addition to the internal core and the capsid, some bacteria actually have an outer membrane. So some viruses, and I might have said bacteria and I didn't mean that, some viruses contain outer membrane and that structure is called an envelope. Okay, so the internal core of nucleic acid contains the viral genes or we can simply call that the viral genome. Viruses, as I mentioned up here, um, replicate inside of cells, so they are intracellular. And there are two different types of life cycles, or reproductive cycles, that are found in viruses. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those. I'm going to use a figure that's in your textbook. Uh, figure 16-21, but first let me list uh, the two terms. So we're talking about types of viral reproductive cycles. So the simplest is called a lytic cycle, and it refers to, it's called lytic because the host cell actually breaks apart, i.e. it lyses. The second type of cycle is a little more complex and it is called a lysogenic cycle. And in this cycle, the viral genome inserts itself into the host DNA. All right, so we're going to take a look at uh, the figure in your textbook um, that diagrams both of these cycles. Okay. 
So again, this is figure 1621, and we are going to look, in this case, at a bacterial cell and a type of virus that actually attacks bacteria. And that is called a phage or bacteriophage. So here's the bacterial cell. This is the uh, bacterial chromosome. In the first step, the virus actually attaches to the cell surface and injects the DNA, its DNA, into the bacterial cell. So we have attachment and injection of DNA. So now in this bacterial cell we have the bacterial chromosome as before, uh, but we also have the bacteriophage or the viral um, DNA or possibly RNA. What happens next is that the viral genome, the genes that have been inserted um, by the virus are going to take over the host machinery to make proteins and transcribe and replicate the, uh, the genes. And that's all going to take place within the bacteria cell. So we end up with many, many copies of the DNA, i.e. the genome, as well as the, the capsid uh, and the other parts of the virus. So inside here we've got lots of copies of those virus particles. In the next step, we're going to get a lysis of the bacteria cell. So the bacteria cell is torn apart and the viral particles are released. And they can infect other cells. So this is called the lytic cycle. But there's also a second category um, of reproductive cycles, and this is shown in this part of the diagram. This is called the lysogenic cycle. And uh, what we have is that the virus will attach to the cell. It may not have to, it could be a eukaryotic cell or a bacteria cell. The genome is introduced into that cell, and what happens next is that the bacterial chromosome and the viral chromosome now become continuous. So the viral DNA has actually inserted itself into the bacterial chromosome. And when the, that cell reproduces, by binary fission, it's going to copy the viral DNA, and we're going to get lots and lots of copies of these cells with the viral DNA. And these cells at some point um, can be triggered to release uh, the viral particle. So now the viral part, the viral genes separate from the bacterial chromosome and we can move into the lytic cycle. So they're actually, um, if a bacteria, if a virus takes on this kind of reproductive cycle, it can move into um, a lytic cycle. Okay, that's the end of 
supplemental lecture part two, and I have one more to go.